is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Here's a look at my Huffy Cranbrook. This is a cruiser bicycle that's sold on Walmart.com and in Walmart stores. This just went on sale for uh, $88. I've kind of been looking at these for a while. My wife uh, actually has a Huffy Cranbrook, an older one. I think it's about three or four years old that my mom gave her. And that kind of started my whole thing with bicycles about a year and a half ago. Uh, I decided I wanted to get a bike so that we could ride together, and that's when I got my Mongoose uh, Walmart bike. I actually didn't buy that bike at Walmart. I bought it used, but I rode it for some time before I got my first Trek, which was a Trek DS1. Uh, the Trek that I'm riding right now, which is an FX2 disc, is in the shop at the moment. And I have some errands to run today, and it's a beautiful Monday today. It's like 73 degrees out and basically no wind. Uh, so it should be a nice day to ride. I have some packages I need to drop off at the mailbox at this shopping center up here. And then I'm going to ride about five miles to this industrial park where my band's practice space is and pick up my car because I left my car there Friday night. My band had a show. I rode down there with my drummer, uh, loaded in the equipment to the show, and then got an Uber back to... Uh, my place and we haven't unloaded the gear yet so my car's just sitting there so I thought I'd go get it I worked a couple hours today and I took Friday Saturday and Sunday off to work on stuff around the house and do that show with my band and stuff so kind of tough to get back in the swing of things today and it's just gorgeous out so I thought I'd do this ride and I've been meaning to do this review of this Huffy for quite a while so I thought I'd just uh ride and talk about the bike and talk about uh, some of the upgrades that I did to it so the furthest distance I've had this Huffy Cranbrook cruiser from my home is about one mile, probably nah, less than one mile, probably about where we are now. So I had about four and a half miles to go to the destination and quite a few hills to climb on the way there. So it should be an interesting experiment to see how this thing climbs. Only one gear in this bike, obviously. This is a single speed cruiser bike. So here's some fun stuff. I hope the camera can pick that up. Here's some fun stuff that I get to deal with on a nearly daily basis. Uh, this grate on this bridge here, and there's another one at the other end of the bridge up there, is uh, set up perfectly to just basically just kill bicycles uh, <laughs> the cyclists as they go over these things. Uh, you can see that the grades are lined with the, the wheels instead of against the wheels. So unless you're a very skilled rider, it's gonna be uh, kind of tough to, to ride over that. And to go around it, you get to go inches away from a very busy four-speed road where the speed limit is 50 miles an hour and people generally are driving much faster than that. So you get to come inches away from 60 mile an hour traffic, you wanna to try to go around it. So you basically just have to wait. And if someone was cycling through here on like a cross country trip or anything, and it'd be really easy to not see that coming. Unless you ride here all the time, you wouldn't even know. These things are gonna be sneaking up on you. You can seriously mess yourself up. I mean, look at the, on this one, that thing's bent to make it an even bigger bicycle trap. So seriously poor urban planning there, urban design or whatever you want to call it. That thing is a death trap. So I've had a number of issues with this bicycle. And they sent it to me. I ordered it on walmart.com and it's basically assembled. You just need to put the wheels on. But one of the wheels was very, very badly warped. It was, uh, geez, I can't even remember now. I think it was the front one. The rim was completely bent to the point where it couldn't be trued. So I wasn't able to ride it when I first got it. I had to call Huffy and have them send me a new front wheel. They said it would take about a week to get there from California. 
and it did arrive exactly a week later. Uh, the only thing was, it sent me the wrong wheel. <laughs> it sent me the rear wheel with the coaster brake on it. And uh, yeah, so I still had the same problem. Called them back, they apologized for the mistake. Sent me uh, another wheel, supposed to be a wrecked front wheel. They actually expedited shipping at my request and I got it in about two, three days. I opened up the box and it was a whole wheel set. It was both wheels, but it was, uh, they were different colors. The spokes were silver instead of black. So I don't know, maybe they ran out of the black ones and that's why they sent me the complete set. I'm not really sure. I didn't call them or anything. I just went with it. I put the two wheels on. I replaced the inner tubes and tires, which I'd never done before. Uh, it was a new thing for me. And in the process, I did blow two tubes. Uh, the first one I installed completely improperly. It's completely my fault that it blew up. And then when I put the other tube in, pretty sure I did it correctly. I'm going to have to run this red light, guys. It's just the way of the world here sometimes. This thing will never, the sensors here will not pick me up. And sometimes I just have to run this light. Don't like doing that. It has to be done. Um, so yeah, the wheel set. Oh yeah, and the inner tubes. So the second one, I'm pretty sure I put on right. It was on there for about 15 minutes and I was just sitting there in the garage and it just popped unexpectedly for seemingly no apparent reason. I went to Walmart, got a slime tube. No, I put the slime tube on the back. I can't remember. But as it turned out, when I took this thing into the shop, to get the wheels trued because the wheels they sent me were still not very true they were rideable they would spin without brushing up against the fenders or anything but i wanted to get them trued by a professional <sighs> turn with a little winded going up this hill actually wasn't that bad hello actually wasn't that bad for a single speed i wasn't even really thinking about it a little out of breath though but yeah as it turned out the uh i'm not sure what that part's called but the lining that goes around the rim the guy said that it was so thin that it had worn through in a couple areas just just from installation basically so that second uh tube pop i don't think was my fault because he said the same thing happened to him when they were turning the wheels they popped a uh, tube and had to replace it. Of course, they charged me like 20 bucks for, and they actually didn't ask me if I wanted them to do that. I, I could have done that myself, probably. But oh well. So yeah, at that point, I had uh, close to $140 into the bike with the repair that you know the truing the repair and what i actually paid for the bike which was like 95 after sh uh, actually for sh shipping was free but sales tax brought it up to 95 bucks and uh the other thing was uh the first time i took it out for a ride uh the first time i took it out i broke one of the pedals uh, like literally in like the first mile That plastic pedal just essentially disintegrated on me I'm gonna go downhill a little bit here And then this will be the after this will be the first major hill I have to climb it's a Short one though So I went to Walmart and I bought some pedals. If any of you watch my other videos, you'll see them. I think it was the second to the last one that I did, where I bought some new pedals at Walmart.
Hello. Hi guys. <laughs> Some big boys. Okay. Well, it's a little harder than it would have been because I lost all my momentum. Um, that wasn't that bad. I don't know anything about gear ratios and all that tech stuff with bicycles, but this feels like I have a 21 speed Trek. And this feels the equivalent of gear about two, two, four, two, five, something like that, somewhere in the middle. So not too bad for climbing. Just hit something there. Another thing I will say about this bike, I thought I had this dialed in. I was having this problem and I thought I fixed it, but it's still going on. This uh, seat post, the clamp isn't really tightening up on me. That seems like it's in there good now. Maybe I'm just, I'm not used to these springy, like shock absorbing seats. So they kind of go side to side. Sometimes it feels like my seat post is going side to side, but I don't think it is. It was for a while. I had to really tighten that clamp down. I had to give it a few twists before I reclamped it. That seemed to do the trick. Or about one or two twists, I'd say, on the bolt. So, yeah, after the initial purchase of the bike, the wheels I didn't have to pay any for. Huffy covered that. And as a result, I ended up with two, I now have two spare back wheels. But they're both the wrong color spokes. They're black instead of silver. This thing's supposed to be black. Like the 2019 Cranbrooks have, Cranbrooks have black spokes, but this one doesn't, which I'm fine with, as long as everything works. So yeah, after the pedals, um, I'm into this thing for, you know, over 150 bucks. I also bought a bell. And if I... I'm serious about riding this thing a lot, I might get a set of lights for it, but... In the meantime, if I need to ride it at night, I can just transfer the lights from my truck onto this thing. This will be, yeah, this is the biggest climb of the trip here. This little four and a half, I guess five miles from my house, more like trip. More like four miles from where I started the camera. I do like the idea of having a cruiser and a, hy and a hybrid bike. Uh, like when my wife and I go on like picnics and stuff, I think cruisers are like really cool to take out just for like little local trips and stuff. A little short, you know, places with, within a one mile radius. It's kind of a fun way to get around. Yeah, this isn't that bad. I'm pretty in shape from riding right now. So this isn't bad for me. I think some people would not want to do this on a cruiser. I understand why. I'm standing up right now, obviously, too. <sighs> yeah, not an ideal setup for climbing, but it works. There's one route I do. There's a real long incline. It's not a real steep incline, but it's very long. And I don't know if I'd want to do that on this thing. This is a little shortcut I like to take. Through this car dealership. It's actually two car dealerships. Lexus and Toyota, which is I think it's kind of the same thing. Now, there is one other issue I wanted to point out with this thing. Well, okay, before I get to that, first of all, 
If you're hung up on the aesthetics of welds on bicycles, I probably wouldn't recommend this bike. The welds are uh, probably some of the sloppiest I've seen. And from what I understand, this is pretty normal with Huffy, even going back to like the 90s. But they don't really clean up like the little beads and stuff that are left after the weld. And they just paint over it. So you'll see like those little, these little tiny balls around the welds. Little tiny balls of solder. And the paint, while it looks real nice, from what I understand, it's pretty thinly applied. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I managed to ding mine. I either dinged it right away or it was like that out of the box from shipping. I'm really not sure. But I put a little bit of red Sharpie over it. and My wife said she might have some fingernail polish that kind of matches this uh, like dark maroon metallic color a little bit more. I'm just going to go around these cars. This guy doesn't run me over. Hey, right, go ahead. That's how people like to drive around bicycles in this town. Really good example right there. That's the kind of thing that I have to deal with and that's why I went around all these cars here even though I had the right of way. I used to get really angry about stuff like that when I started riding. But then he kind of just started to accept it as the norm. There is a social stigma, especially in the central Midwest, I think, associated with an adult male in particular riding a bicycle. People just kind of automatically assume that you're uh, either like mentally, you know, challenged or uh, have a DUI, driving under intoxication, intoxication, whatever, DWI it's called in some states. And uh, I'm sure you that's not the case, me. I just like riding bicycles. I actually think it's a much more civilized way to get around and a more mindful way to get around. saw me coming and pulled his car up a little bit. I don't know if I caught, caught that on camera. He saw that I was going to close that. He saw that I was going to go through that gap and he tried to close it for me. It was nice. Nice older gentleman. So this is uh, one of the trails that we have going through town. This connects with the big Greenway that we have now called uh, the Rock Island Greenway. I don't know what this trail is called, but it connects Peoria to Dunlap. I really feel like my steep post is moving on me, but I don't think it is. It's weird though. Maybe I'm just not used to the shocks on these cruiser seats. Yeah, it's just kind of how that how the springs make it move side to side there. I did have the thought of making this a little less cru cruiser-like and a little more hybrid-y by putting uh, like commuter-type bars. It feels weird for my hands. I don't know if the camera can see that. My hands would be all the way up to the side here on my commuter bikes. I'm used to having them more in like a flat bar. They're not really quite flat bars, but a flat bar type position. So I did have the thought of getting those type of handlebars, maybe with like uh, 
two to four inch rise, so my hands are kind of down about here. I know it's kind of part of the cruiser vibe to have the, the swept out handlebars. It's kind of part of the slow and low vibe of the cruiser thing. So I am gonna keep, keep them like it is for a while and see if I get used to it. Kinda after riding for two miles on like this, uh, they don't feel as uncomfortable as I thought they would, really. Kinda get used to it. Probably get used to the seat thing, too. I know my wife really likes the seat on her cruiser. She digs the, the shock absorption for the bumps and stuff. She kinda wants to put one on her commuter bike. Which I think is doable. When I bought my first bike, my mongoose, I kind of assumed that all the all the parts were compatible, like all seat posts and seats and pedals and etc. All that stuff was compatible, like a standard. But just like lots of other things. There's been a lot of competing standards over the year, over the years. Just kind of learning about all that, like with the pedals. I know this is, these are half inch pedals and the Trek is 9 16 which is, you know, really, really close. <laughs> but not close enough to, to be compatible. Now, the only other thing, first off, I want to say I really am enjoying this ride. It's just a much more mellow, it's way slower than my Trek. But on a day to day, like today, it's just a real nice mellow ride. Mellow, comfortable ride. Not pushing my legs like I usually am either. Just because of the way these things are set up, your legs don't extend out nearly as much as they do on a hybrid or like a road bike. Like a road bike, you're supposed to get them, so... Your legs almost completely extend like straight to a straight position when you're at full extension. And my, my Trek FX, uh, I have kind of set up close to that, but not quite. I had it set up for probably full extension at one time, and it really hurt my knees. My right knee in particular, I have like a really old injury it never really healed quite right and that was really aggra aggravating the heck out of it it actually took me a while to figure out that that's what it was but i adjusted my seat height one day i think just because i was putting a new rack on or something like that and then it ended up being a, sh a shade lower and i rode it like that for a couple of days and i noticed my knee pain went away that's when i made the connection Supposed to give me three feet. He did. That van definitely didn't. See, so after the wheel truing, I am happy with the way this thing is riding, and I don't have to look at the the wheel wobbling back and forth. Even though it rode okay like that, I just wasn't okay with it. The only other problem I'm having with this thing is, I guess, and I guess this is very common with like cheaper coaster brake type bikes. Let me find a spot where I can coast. But when I'm coasting and my pedals are in a certain position, it makes that rubbing sound. 
Can't get it to do it now, of course. There it is. The mechanical rubbing sound has to do with those coaster brakes. Uh, the my bike mechanic explained the detail, how, what was going on, but I can't really remember. But it has something to do with the brakes rubbing up against the the hub. And he said the only way to re repair it is to basically replace the hub. So I'd have to buy a new hub, and I'd have to pay them to lace it. I think is what he how he called it. Uh, lace it into the new wheel. So I think what I'm gonna actually do is just deal with it for the meantime. And eventually I've been looking at those Shimano Nexus replacement rear hubs. They make three speed, seven speed, and eight speed rear hubs. And that would uh, make this bike a little bit more serviceable on those climbs. Although I have to say, I was surprised at how really not that, that, that bad those climbs were. I think I'd kind of built it up in my mind that it was going to be really hard, so it wasn't. But if I had to, I think I could. This could be my main bike in Peoria if I you know, had no choice. I could get everywhere I needed to go on this. I just have to work a little harder. Well, to wrap things up here, I think I ended up having a lot more fun on this thing today than I could have ever expected. After a three week, two, three week uh, process of getting this thing actually together and running, it was nice to get it, get, out, get it out and put some miles on it for the first time. That was the first time I've ridden this thing in traffic and uh, really performed better than I could have expected. I haven't ridden a bike like this, like a single gear bike, since I was a kid uh, with the coaster brake and yeah it kind of takes me back to that time uh, but you know the 26 inch wheels and everything obviously makes it a lot more functional I found that at least on a day like today where there isn't a lot of wind the lack of gears really didn't present that much of a challenge to me at all so I think I'm going to end up riding this thing a lot more often and a little bit more further out than I thought I would be able to so I'm happy about that I talked earlier in the video about upgrades that I've done to the bike and I guess the only real upgrades I've done to it other than the tubes are just the pedals. These pedals I got at Walmart, they're Snafu brand, Dominator pedals. Uh, Snafu I thought was an interesting name for a company if you're familiar with what that military acronym, acronym actually stands for but they seem to be reasonable quality steel pedals and the layout of them reminds me of the I think it's Welgo or Weljo, probably Welgo brand pedals that I bought for my Trek. Those are aluminum though, and these are steel pedals, but so far pretty happy with the look and the functionality of those guys. I am still thinking about possibly upgrading the handlebars and the seat. I'm not sure if I'm sold on the shot, the springy shot comfort uh, cruiser seat. It just uh, feels kind of weird to me. It is comfortable. I'm going to give it a chance before I switch it out. I know it's part of the whole cruiser vibe. Same with the handlebars. But I do feel like if I raise that seat up, put a different seat on, you know, just went with some like smaller riser, uh, not, like narrower uh, riser handlebars, that this thing would just feel a little bit more like a bike that I could ride in traffic. But definitely happy with it. I like don't think i would recommend this bike just because of the huge hassle involved with getting it going i would definitely buy from huffy again while i had some problems with the bike their customer service was excellent i was able to get on the phone with somebody right away uh, with somebody that you know had the power to take care of stuff so that was nice even though they sent me the wrong part that one time and i had to wait a few more days i can't say good enough things about huffy customer service and I definitely dig the Huffy, you know, design with their bicycles, uh, the stuff they're doing. I wish they could. I know if with their, the buying power of Walmart, I know that these companies have to make stuff really cheap to conform to the specs that Walmart gives them. But it's just a shame because with their buying power, if they could spend $10 in additional parts, that would be like, you know, cons the consumer level, like, you know, a $30, $40 upgrade in parts um, to them would be like $10 per bicycle at the end of the day. 
and I think that would make a huge difference in the, this bike, you know, just if they were able to have the better quality wheels, you know, with the, without the super thin, uh, I'm kind of embarrassed that I made this video without looking up what that part's called, but the, the thing that goes around the rim, like the rubber part, which was why it was a uh, popping tubes. I went over that earlier in the video, but they would have addressed that problem and, you know, just some better, better pedals and, you know, slightly better quality, uh, like the bottom bracket. I know these things are is always like under greased or whatever. My bike mechanic actually suggested not paying him to do that. He said it would be, it would make more sense to just wear it out and just replace it. He said it's like an $18 part. So he said if that bottom bracket goes bad, it makes more sense to just replace it and then, you know, properly um, grease it at that time. So I took his advice there. So far, I haven't had any problems with the bottom bracket that I can tell. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if I would recommend this bike, but for me personally, I'm happy the way it turned out. Uh, this was a $88 budget bike, uh, which turned into maybe a not so budget bike after the two tubes that I bought and uh, the pedals and the repairs, the wheel truing. Uh, it's more like 160, a little over 160 at the end of the day. I did buy this bell. But I think if I would have spent that much money on an equivalent, a uh, higher quality cruiser, like maybe from Schwinn or something like that, uh, at the end of the day, I think it'd be a similar quality bike and pretty happy with this. I, I like the look. One other thing I was thinking about doing was changing out the sticker. This is just the, the head, I think they call it a head tube badge. And it's just a sticker and I was looking at some vintage Huffy uh, head tube badges on eBay and they weren't that bad of a price so might take that off and put something cooler on there I also saw this blog where people in like Brooklyn were like hipster type cyclists in Bro Brooklyn were uh, using they were making their own head tube badges out of like beer cans and like import beer cans and stuff I thought that was kind of a cool idea, so I might try something like that too. I can see a ding here too. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but that might be new. I didn't notice that before. I did take all the decals off of this, except for the Huffy decals down here on the fork. Still debating whether to leave those or not. But I definitely like the cleaner look without the decals on the body. That's it for my review of the 2019 Huffy Cranbrook. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks a lot.